Today I will talk uh, about neonatal hyperglycemia and its management in the neonatal intensive care unit. Uh, there is no established uh, definition for hyperglycemia in units. However, uh, we can uh, take the figure of uh, 125 milligram per deciliter if it is blood glucose, or uh, if plasma or serum glucose, it is uh, 150 milligram per deciliter as uh, a definition of hyperglycemia. But for sure, this does not mean that we have to treat on these numbers. Uh, actually, these are uh, uh, figures of uh, defining hyperglycemia. But uh, uh, when we talk about treatment, the recommendation to start treatment uh, are either two blood uh, uh, sugars more than 14 millimole uh, per liter on two occasions or more than 12 millimole per liter uh, on two occasions in addition to uh, glycosuria 2 plus on urine stick uh, how common a neonatal hyperglycemia it's actually uh, more common in uh, very low birth weight and especially in uh, extreme low birth weight babies so if we compare extreme low birth weight babies uh, to babies who, uh, uh, whose weights are from 1 to 2 kilograms, the incidence of hyperglycemia is almost 18 times than the babies with uh, 1 to 2 kilogram weight. Usually hyperglycemia is a silent uh, presentation. Actually, it's a biochemical disorder that would not be diagnosed without uh, the measurement of uh, glucose concentration. So do not wait for uh, uh, hyperglycemia, for symptoms to uh, diagnose hyperglycemia, every unit should have its own uh, routine measurement of uh, random blood sugar, either daily or twice daily, according to your setup, uh, in order to detect hyperglycemia, in addition to uh, more frequent readings for high-risk babies. Anyhow, uh, hyperglycemia can sometimes cause symptoms for example it can cause osmotic diuresis leading to dehydration or in extreme situations it can cause a hyperosmolar coma with cerebral and neuronal edema seizures and intracranial hemorrhage on the long term uh, hyperglycemia can cause uh, poor weight gain impaired immunity and it may uh, increase susceptibility to infection some babies are at higher risk than others, for example, preterm babies and babies with intrauterine uh, growth restriction. Uh, other risk factors, including increased uh, stress hormones, for example, increased catecholamine infusions and plasma concentrations, or increased uh, glucocorticoid concentrations, either from use of antenatal steroids, postnatal glucocorticoid administration, or due to stress and increased glucagon concentrations. Other risk factors include early and high rates of intravenous lipid infusion and higher than needed rates of intravenous glucose infusion. How to monitor hyperglycemia? Most blood gas machines provide glucose measurements. So uh, most of the time you do have reading for the sugar, but you have to look at it. Uh, you need to check blood glucose at least six to eight hourly in uh, special situations, uh, including unstable or critically uh, ill uh, babies, like babies who are having respiratory distress syndrome, septicemia, or necrotizing enterocolitis. Uh, you need to check blood glucose at least once a day in stable babies, at least once a day. Uh, if the baby is less than 32 weeks gestation for the first week, uh, I would, uh, a baby is receiving uh, parenteral nutrition or babies with severe unexpected dehydration or metabolic acidosis or babies with poor weight gain while receiving more than 120 kilocalorie per kg per day. Now, babies uh, who are on corticosteroids, you need to check for urine uh, for glycosuria daily, and you need to check blood glucose if more than or equal to two times glucose in urine. How to treat hyperglycemia? Uh, if possible, uh, discontinue or decrease the medications that worsen hyperglycemia, like uh, catecholamines or uh, steroids. 
then lipid component of the parenteral nutrition may contribute to worsening hyperglycemia. So if the baby is in parenteral nutrition, discuss stopping lipids with the consultant or the pharmacist. For babies who are suspected to have infection or who are suspected to have necrotizing enterocolitis, uh, hyperglycemia in baby with the uh, previously stable blood glucose may be an early indicator of infection or necrotizing enterocolitis. So you need to assess the baby clinically and after taking appropriate cultures, you have to treat empirically. Fluid management in babies with hyperglycemia. If the blood glucose is more than 12 millimole per liter, you need to check urine for glycosuria, glycosuria. If more than uh, 2 plus and assess clinical hydration and fluid input output, then you need to check for fluid administration errors. You have to calculate the amount of glucose uh, the baby is receiving as milligram per kg per minute using the formula. This is one of the formulas which is uh, glucose infusion rate equals to the percent glucose infusion multiplied by the fluid rate in ml per kg per day and divided at 144. Of course, there are other uh, formulas, but you need to recognize or memorize one, at least one of these formulas. Now, if the glucose delivery rate is more than 10 mg per kg per minute, you need to decrease glucose uh, in the uh, decrements to 6 to 10 mg per kg per minute. If in parental nutrition, uh, 8 to 10 mg per kg per minute is acceptable. Now, if uh, glucosuria and hyperglycemia, glucose is more than uh, 12 millimole per liter uh, per zest, despite an appropriate glucose infusion, then you have to consider treating with insulin. Now we will talk about the insulin uh, use. Commence insulin uh, therapy at 0.05 unit per kg per hour and titrate according to response. Check blood glucose one hour from starting and then hourly until the target is reached. Increase the insulin by increment of 0.05 to 0.1 unit per kg per hour. Uh, the target blood glucose while on insulin should be 6 to 8 millimole per liter. <clears throat> now, once blood glucose is stable, continue to monitor blood glucose for hourly. Then, when a baby is on insulin, it is very important to prevent hypoglycemia. We will see the next slide. So, this slide represents the action that should be done uh, uh, at different levels of glucose. So if we have a blood glucose reading uh, more than 8, we have to increase the infusion rate in steps of 0.05 to 0.1 units per kg per hour. The rate of increase will uh, be dependent on the rate of fall in the blood glucose. If it is from 6 to 8, you have to maintain at the current rate. So our target is 6 to 8 millimole per liter. If the uh, blood glucose more than 4 but less than 6, here we have to reduce insulin rate by in steps of 0.05 to 1 unit per kg per hour to maintain blood glucose more than 4 millimole per liter. And the rate of reduction will be dependent on the rate of fall in the blood glucose. If the blood glucose drops, drops to below 4, then we have to stop infusion immediately. We need to recheck blood glucose one hour after reducing the dose, then one to two hourly until stable, then four hourly once it's stable. If unable to wean off insulin after one week, transient neonatal diabetes is possible. Here we need to consult pediatric endocrinologist. Early detection, uh, sorry, early introduction of parenteral nutrition and early trophic enteral feeding will help reduce uh, incidence of hyperglycemia requiring insulin. These are my references. Thank you for watching.